Hi there everyone, Megan Clark, CEO of Clark Financial, tuning in for your monthly update. Wanted to touch base with you all and just let you know a couple of updates here from Clark Financial as well as give you some tax tips. So it's really important to keep in mind that we're not legally allowed to give you tax advice. However, a lot of what we do here at Clark Financial is considered tax planning, and it's a really important part of what we do for our clients. And so at the end of the day, uh, what you it's not about what you make, but it's about what you keep. And that's what really matters. That's a very cliche statement, and but what I wanna do is put some numbers to it. So bear with me here uh, through our first part, and we'll get to the numbers here in the second part of our video but first off I wanted to start up with some updates there's a piece of legislation that's currently possibly about to be passed and it's actually going to increase the top marginal tax rate in our country and so a really important graph that I think and an important point that I think a lot of people and a lot of us including myself we forget on a yearly basis is that tax rates are actually on sale today what does that mean well if you look at page 58 in the retirement compass our book um, there is is a graph of US historical marginal tax rates in our country and we're offering up this chapter for you so uh, if you're interested just shoot us an email it's chapter 8 in the book and we'll get that chapter out to you after the uh, video but I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about tax rates what that looks like etc because it's really important to think about um, what is going on in your portfolio, what it means today, and what it's gonna mean five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and possibly even what it's going to mean for your heirs, right? So um, if you're in a place where you're concerned about the tax implications that we leave to our kids and our grandkids, um, or charities, right? What does that look like? And so it's really important to think about um, what we can do now to prevent a future headache later. In the retirement income certified professional course the designation that I have um, it one of the courses talks about the tax time bomb and the idea of the money that we have if we save it all into 401k and after tax dollars um, pre I'm sorry pre-tax dollars like 401ks then when we go to take it out it's all going to be taxable and so a big question that we always poise and ask is what are tax brackets going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? Because that is a variable that we can't control. So in previous videos, I talked to you all about worrying about things that we can control. And what we can control is taxes today, right? So what we can control is um, what are we doing today with our tax planning to set us up for a good tax diversification strategy in the future so that we're not in a place where when we get to retirement and we go to turn around instead of accumulating those assets, we use all of those assets, we're not in a place where all of that money that we're gonna bring in from those assets is all going to be taxable as ordinary income. So really important things to keep in mind when you're talking to your financial planners here at Clark Financial is what are we doing from a tax planning standpoint? Could I be paying a little more today to, in taxes to mitigate future tax risk? Because tax bracket risk and growth is something that um, is a variable that's not controllable by, um, by ourselves, right? It's a legislation risk and it is what it is. So without further ado, the other update I wanted to give you is a really um, exciting tool that we've added here to our menu of services for our clients again just building out all of the services for you so if you didn't catch an earlier video we've recently added in the past year what we call um, property and casualty insurance which is your home auto etc so if you haven't sent us over those declaration pages for us to shop that for you uh, across an independent uh, company just let us know we can get several quotes and then um, the other item that is really important that I wanted to talk about is the idea of 401k management. So as most of you know, a lot of times we get your um, op options and your 401k for you, optimize those, um, really take advantage of what we can do inside your 401k for you, and then give you that homework to go implement. So one of the tools that we've been evaluating for the better part of the last two years is uh, where can we find a tool that we can kind of bolt in to your 401k and take that management off your plate 
right? And also add in a better level of management with some better access to better tools. So a lot of you um, should have access to what's called a self-directed brokerage account inside your 401k. And if you do, then what I'm talking about does pertain to you. And it's something that we can evaluate with your financial planning team and see if it makes sense for us to help you with it. But it's another way for us to just take control of your financial future and make sure that uh, money is being managed as best as possible. So if that's something of interest, definitely reach out to our team and let us know. You can call, text, um, or email our client service, uh, or you can text our main line as well. So without further ado, let's get back to the tax mitigation strategies. So with in your accounts, you have IRA accounts, Roth IRA accounts, and then you have another type of an account called a non-qualified account. And so this non-qualified account can be an individual account, a joint brokerage account, but really it's money that you've already paid taxes on and it goes into investment. So that is what I wanna to address today, is how can we make those dollars work the best for us that we can? And so there's lots of tools out there and strategies, but one tool I'm gonna talk about in particular today is what we call real assets and, and diversifying into those real assets and using that category. And it's been one of the categories that year to date across the board is pretty positive, um, maybe a small negative here and there, but it, it's giving us that diversification in our portfolios that you're seeing that we need. And it's so important when we have years like uh, 2022 where the market is just going haywire. So let's talk about two investors, investor A, and investor B. Investor A and uh, you know excuse my handwriting uh, it's not the best. <laughs> so investor A invests a hundred dollars in a dividend paying stock so just a regular stock and again for all of you watching this is only for um, non-qualified money so I'm just going to abbreviate that non-Q, non-qualified, not your Roth IRA, not your traditional IRA. So investor A invests $100 and investor B also invests $100 into an investment. But the investor B invests in what we call real assets. Okay, so I'm just going to abbreviate that RA, real assets. And so investor, we're just going to use easy numbers to keep this simple. 10% uh, on a rate of return for a dividend paying stock is abnormal, just to throw that out there. But we'll, let's say that we receive $10, okay? So 10% or $10 on the dividend paying stock. Wow, that's really great, um, wonderful. The question is, at the end of the year, do you end up effectively having $10 to spend? Or is there something else at play here? And the answer is taxes. And yes, there's something else. So Uncle Sam, he has to take his cut, right? And so let's say that we're in a 20% federal tax bracket and a 5% state. So the total taxes here, 25%. And that's the effective tax yield here. And the 1099 is gonna come in and it's gonna say that you add $10 in ordinary income. And so out of that $10, we're gonna have to send $2.50 to Uncle Sam, okay? $2.50 to Uncle Sam. So what do we end up at the end of the at the end of the year being able to spend? Do we get to spend $10? No, not at all. We end up with $7.50. And that's it. So $7.50 is what investor A gets to spend from their 10% or $10 dividend. So go over to investor B, and this is invested using real assets. So investor B also gets the same exact rate of return because we don't we want to compare apples to apples here. So same same rate of return, same tax bracket at 25%, all right? But at the end of the year, when they receive the 1099, investor B, the 1099 is going to state that $5 or 50% of the dividend was taxable as ordinary income. And the other $5 is in this box that says non-taxable, non-taxable, okay? Sometimes it'll be in the return of capital box as well. And that's not saying that they're actually returning your capital, but these investments, the way that they do the accounting 
for the depreciation and the deductions on the real assets is that they actually put it in the non-taxable or the return of capital box. And so again, this investor B received $10 and they have to pay tax on $5. So at a 25% tax bracket, that equates to $1.25. So at the end of the year, investor A had $7.50 to spend. Investor B, let's talk about how much they had to spend, okay? So they got the $5 that wasn't taxable, um, and then they had the $5 that is taxable, and they paid the $1.25. So investor B actually gets to keep $5 plus 375. So 875, simple math here, right? Here's the question, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the year, would you rather be investor A than invested $100 and got to spend $7.50, or would you rather be investor B, invest $100 and get to spend $8.75, okay? Obviously, we wanna be investor B because it's not about what you make, it's about what you get to keep, and at the end of the day, if we, we wanna pay our fair share to taxes, but we don't wanna pay more than we have to, and so, Utilizing some of these real assets can be a really great addition to any cash or non-qualified investments that we have. It's not a magic trick. It's not like that $5 that's coded in that box just disappears, okay? What happens from an accounting standpoint, and again, we're not accountants, but it's a big part of what we do. What happens from an accounting standpoint is this original cost basis or the amount of money that the investor put in was $100. And so if they received back that $5, that non-taxable box, what it does is it actually reduces the cost basis of the investment from $100 down to $95, okay? And so um, the reason, and this is, you know, depre essentially depreciation or capture, like what we want to talk about, but um, is an idea that was used in investment real estate. But... $95 ends up being the cost basis. And so if this investment now sells uh, three years later for $100, all right, and each year it was a $5 deduction from the cost basis, then that means that we would be at $85 um, for the actual cost basis. And so what happens is that this difference of the $15 that we haven't paid taxes on yet, right, because it was coded in the non-taxable return of capital box under 1099, this $15 gets recaptured and we pay long-term capital gains on it, okay? Long-term capital gains, current tax rates are around 15%. So at the end of the day, we're able to pay less in taxes over time. And in addition, if we're in retirement, folks, the provisional income calculation adds in ordinary income. It does not count capital gains. Provisional income is a calculation that, again, um, you know, Retirement Income Certified Professional uh, course talks about this ad nauseum, but um, it's really important to understand because when you're in retirement, you might not be able to receive 100% of your Social Security benefit. Some of it might be taxed. And that amount of how much of your Social Security benefit can be taxed, up to 80% of it can be taxed, that amount is all dependent on that provisional income calculation. And so not only how we save and accumulate does this have a net effect long term, right? But definitely once we get in and close to our retirement years, as we gear up to go from our accumulation phase into our distribution phase of retirement, this type of tool and this type of tax planning within your investments is insanely vital. So I just wanted to share that tax tip. I know it's tax season and um, hopefully most of you have already gotten your taxes done. If not, um, you know, keep in mind that you can always file an extension. And I hope that you guys are all doing really well, staying the course and uh, just, you know, uh, taking advantage of some of these sunnier days that we're having. Appreciate all of your trust and support and we look forward to working with you for decades to come.